you know, they say you, you walk together forever after you win a championship. That's the first time I felt it, uh, to be able to sit around with the guys at dinner and hear some of the stories that were going on that I thought I had a good handle on what was going on with the team. And, uh, you know, after hours, and, uh, boy, some of the stories I heard while I was sitting around with them, I had no clue what was going on around me. Uh, but it was uh, it was special to see guys 10 years and reminisce as far as what they're doing now. Uh, it was it was really exciting for me. What kind of stuff are they talking about? Can you share any of those stories? Well, well, I can't. You no, know, I can't. Come I'm really on. Not on the There's air. only the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I thought I really had a good handle. Uh, you know, I didn't have a curfew, but I, I thought they understood what they had to do. But boy, uh, for about 20 minutes, some of the stories going on, I had no idea what they were doing after, <laughs> after our games. And but you know what, guys, I. I I think sometimes when when stuff happens after games and and you're you're together and you're having dinner and you know you know it kind of goes off the rails a little bit. It, it that camaraderie is a very important thing. And uh, we had some characters, we had some personalities with that team, and I thought it just kind of lent itself to us uh, uh, winning. We, you know, we didn't have a clue what we were doing when we were winning the thing. I just think we had the right personality, stayed healthy, and a little bit of luck, and we found our way. John, I was surprised to hear that you were nervous going into the dinner the night before. Walk me through that. Well, you know, I, I, I wasn't going to go. Uh, I called Billy Wickett, the, my head, the head guy there that was really taking care of all this. I don't know. It, it is uh, – I'm not great in crowds. Uh, I, I miss the players. Um, I just – it was just, it was, I, I've never done anything like that before. I, I'm usually in the locker room with them. That's our relationship. But to have dinner and outside of coach player, uh, in a group, wives and everything like that, I, I, I just, you know, I, I was, I was nervous. And, uh, but you know, guys, Tim Taylor and Dave Anderchuk met me at the door before I even met the rest of the group. And, uh, the way they responded to me, and I hadn't seen them for years, um, it you know, and I'm not a big guy to get real emotional, but it was really cool, and uh, I re- I'm glad I did it. Uh, you know, I, my other coaches would tell me you have to go, and I had a number of people saying you got to go. I'm so happy I did it because I would have missed something. I, I, it it would have been wrong for me to miss that, and. And just to relate with them in a different role as uh, as friends, as adults, and and uh, you know you've gone through it together. We had a lot of emails coming in because they knew you were coming on the air this morning. Some of them we can read, some of them we just won't. Uh, <laughs> this one here I thought was pretty good, John from Justin. He said injuries have been a big part of managing the team this year and in coaching. In your opinion, which injury has had the biggest impact and why? Well, I don't think there's any one. Uh, I mean, Chris Tanev, uh, has, has, that's a big injury for us, and now we have it with him now. Uh, you know, Henrik, Daniel, it, it's not the injuries of um, – it, it's been a lot of injuries of our top guys and, and extended injuries. Uh, I don't think we can use that as an excuse, though. I think it would have done for us in the organization – it has shown us that we haven't been able to absorb them with our depth. And uh, uh, I, I think that's been a problem when we've had so many of these and, and trying to find our way. Um, we cannot put the blame on the injuries. We, we have not been consistent enough uh, with our situational play, uh, our consistency of our play offensively and defensively. But it has played a role. And, uh, but it has shown that we haven't been able to handle handle those type of injuries we just don't have the depth to do it john if the injuries have been the biggest disappointment would jensen be the the nicest surprise oh gosh Uh, he is uh and this is where guys i uh, you know as we met mike myself the owners and and talking about changing the team and i felt this when i first got here i i knew it was a veteran team and, and we need to instill some youth and enthusiasm into our group i felt that right away and uh, to have this kid come up and just play. He, he's uh, uh, bright-eyed, and he's just allowing himself to play. Uh, the tr- uh, when we traded Roberto, when we bring in Sean as a, as a big center, another youthful guy, 
I think that's that's very important for our club here. Uh, I think we're going to keep our culture, uh, the Sedins and 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 really the culture of our team, but we need to surround it with some youth. And I think you see some of this starting right now. And uh, you know, and, and it seems to be a little bit of a marriage now with Henrik, uh, Henrik and Burr. I, I think Henrik and Burr are helping him, but I also think he's helping them. And it, it's a nice, uh, nice little chemistry going on here. That you know, we threw them together, and it's happened. And, and we'll see where we go. How challenging, John, is it to coach in a hockey mad market when things aren't going well? How are you feeling? I'm okay. Uh, you know, th- this is this is part of part of the business. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I I love it here. I, I mean, I love the scrutiny. I, I wish it could have. I wish it could be more positive. But listen, we make our own bed, and, and when you're not winning, it's going to go the other way. And uh, I understand that totally. Uh, uh, it, it's such a, gr- a great fan base, the media. Uh, there's no other place I'd rather be in the pressure of this. Is it fun when it's going off the rails a bit? No, but uh, we got to have some skin here. This is a big part of my job is to handle those type of situations. And, and the bottom line is, is not really focus and, and, and make decisions because of all that. Make decisions for what you think is going to solve the problems and help the hockey club and uh, th- that's how I that's how I do it, guys. I go home every night, and I know some of my decisions haven't been popular. But I-, I want you to know the decisions I make is what I think is best for the hockey team, and that's when I can look myself in the mirror and say, "You're making the decision for the right reason," and uh, and-, and and that's how I have to live by it. And and I know some of them have been unpopular. John, hindsight's twenty twenty. If there is one do over, what would it be? You know, in, in in a general term, in general terms, uh, I, I think I let off the gas pedal a little bit too much. Uh, with an older team, I tried to approach this a little bit differently and, and not uh, leaning all the time. Um, you know, a lot of people think that I've been really hard on the club in the in the locker room, and I, I really haven't. I... I have tried to push the principles, push the details, but I also have tried to show the respect of an older team in, in, in conversing and being with them. And I think that's very important that I do that. Uh, but I, I think when uh, towards the middle of the year, I, I think this started coming undone a little bit towards the end of December. And um, I, 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 th- I think I should have been leaning a little bit harder, quite honestly, guys, on, on the details of the game and, that is my responsibility, and that's what I regret the most. And you just can't recoup that right away. I think we're getting better at them now. Uh, I think our third periods are getting better. Uh, but it, did we save it in time? I don't know. But that middle of the year, I, I think I really need to keep on teaching the details. And uh, that's on my shoulders. We're not consistent enough with those details. The incident in Calgary, of course, you know everybody talks about it, and you and Bob Hartley in January turned into the really big story. And uh, mm-hmm. what what did you learn from that? Well, that that you know that is uh, just totally irresponsible on my part. Um, you know, I I'll give you the anatomy of it. I look at the lineup, and I, I, you know, it, it, a lot of people said you just should have put out some other people and would have diffused it. It's really easy to say that, but what if I get someone injured uh, in, in that type of situation? I would I would put the same lineup out against that lineup. I would do the same thing. Um, I felt awful. I put my players in that spot, but I felt I needed to. We discussed it as a group before the game started. Um, and quite honestly, guys, I couldn't even coach the first period. I was so upset what was going on. Um, I was... Uh, I wasn't even making, you know, I wasn't even thinking straight in that first period. And that is irresponsible of a head coach of a team not to have the control. Uh, I went down the hallway because I felt I needed to protect my team. It may sound silly, and it is silly, uh, but that's my thinking, and I made a huge mistake. Um, uh, So that, 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 that I asked my team to be disciplined. I need to be in more control there. And, uh, uh, you know, as my good friend Jim Schoenfeld always always told me, everybody has rats in their basement. And I am trying to distill my rats. The rats crawled out of the basement that night, and I regret it. Let's also talk about the decision not to start Roberto Luongo at the Heritage Classic. Would you do it different? Uh, same situation, same. 
I wouldn't. Um, and again, it goes back to my the prior answer I gave to you guys, where you know I have to make decisions for what's best for the team. The, Louis's numbers, the the five, six, seven games prior to that, it was a bit of a struggle there. Um, and, and listen, guys, I, we we talked as a group, along with Mike, my general manager, about this because I knew I knew the ramifications of it. Uh, it, it it's a it, and. If it didn't, if it didn't work out, and we didn't win, and Eddie didn't play well, you could punch a lot of holes in it, and and that's what happened, and and rightfully so. Uh, but I have to go. Eddie was playing well. Roberto wasn't going to play the first game back from the Olympics. Eddie played real well there. I went with him with another game. Plays really well there. Stopped six uh, shootout uh, uh, shots to help us win a game. And then, the, and Roberto and I had a man-to-man conversation the day before that game, and and I have a tremendous amount of respect for Louis, a tremendous competitor. He wanted that game. He was mad, he, and it was a, it was a very honest discussion between him and I. But I still couldn't get by that. I I need to make the decision. The best player at that point in time to try to win us that game, with 22 games left. I felt it was. I, th- I felt Eddie Lack was going to give us a better chance then. It wasn't to upseed Roberto was the number one, but with 22 games left, I-, I needed to make that decision. Now, if it's 40 games in, I'm still not sure I wouldn't have made the same decision. But it would have. Uh, I think it would have been a little bit of different circumstance. Uh, be- but we have such short strokes, and, and I and I and I'm honest with you guys that it would have been an easy decision to play Louis. Uh, but I think some of the harder decisions uh, I need to make for what's best for the team. And Eddie struggled, uh, didn't play well. We lose the game, and and there you go. And uh, I weighed that. I really did. And uh, But uh, to answer your question, I guess it's a long-winded answer here, I would make the same decision in the same circumstance. Now, you know, we, we talk about the fan-crazy base that we have here, and I, 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 yes. I, it's, it's unlike any other situation you've ever been in, and, and certainly as a guy that's traveled around in radio and been in all the major cities, I've never seen anything like it. They, you know, we've had poll questions. They've called for your head. They've called for Mike Gillis's <laughs> head. They've called for Francesco's head. Now, with everything going on, you're in a position right now. Do you feel you'll be here next year? Well, it's it, it. You know, you're asking the wrong guy. Um, I, I think you need to ask the guy that makes that decision. And uh, do I want to be here? Absolutely. I I I, I like the guys. I, I I think we've made the right decision and 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 trying to retool this team. Uh, but I, I am not going to make decisions with my job and and my decision making to try to keep my job. I'm going to make decisions for what I think is best for the hockey club. And if and if Francesco and his family or Mike, if they deem that those decisions are wrong and they're not happy, they will show me the door, and that that's fine. That that is part of the business. I mean that that's what I love about the business is, is you do have that pressure. And but I can't I can't cower away from it and try to keep my job. I need to try to do my job the best way I think I can possibly can, along with the people and my coaches around me and the decisions that we make. And, and again, if the people uh, that make those decisions for me, as far as my job, they're not happy, they will show me the door. And uh, so I, I think you need to get the other guys on the on the radio station and ask them that question. <laughs> <laughs> John, having said that, what is your relationship right now with Mike Gillis? Mike Gillis and I get along fine. I mean, we have uh, uh, a very good working relationship. We talk about a lot of things, and, and outside the business, too. Uh, I think he's one of the most interesting men I've met uh, uh, the thing I like about Mike is he is searching for and turning over every stone uh, to try to give us an advantage. And uh, uh, so, yeah, we, we talk about everything. You know, you talk about Roberto, the Luongo decision. We talk about that. We're talking about our team, our personnel. Uh, it's been a wide open uh, relationship and a very good one. Media, have they been fair? Media has been fair. Sure. I, I mean, Guys, I don't read much of it. Uh, I really don't. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm around town, and uh, I get bits and pieces. Uh, ben Brown and, and his staff fill me in as far as what's going on. Uh, but, listen, this is part of it. I, I, I know people are mad. 
<laughs> I, I get it. They want to win. So don't I. So so does the coaching staff. And and when things don't go well, there is going to be criticism. There's going to be speculation. And uh, that, that's that's part of it. And in such a major market, uh, I'd rather be here than have it not being covered at all and, and not being relevant and and important to people. So uh, I'm right in it. I'm right in it. And and when when it's not going well, yeah. You handle it and, and take it, uh, but but go about your business, what you think is best for your team, and keep banging away at this. And that's what I hope I have the opportunity to do, and that's what I'm going to do.